What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV, and today we're going to present to you the top 50 places on planet Earth for you to add to your bucket list. Just a reminder, there will be timestamps below so you can click around from destination to destination. First up, we're headed to South America to one of the most spectacular waterfalls on planet Earth, Iguazu Falls, located on the border of Argentina and Brazil. Located in the Iguazu National Park, it is a UNESCO World Heritage site. Typically, people who want to visit here arrive in Buenos Aires and then take a flight to Iguazu. The main area of the waterfall is called the Devil's Throat Canyon. It's 300 feet wide and 260 feet deep. There also is a walkway around the waterfall. Next up, we're headed to the Arabian Desert where Petra, Jordan, is located. This is home to the ancient Nabataeans and currently the Bedouin people live here. This archaeological site is 150 miles away from Jerusalem and 150 miles away from Amman, so you can get there both ways. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. At one point in time, the Romans had expanded their empire into Petra around 106 AD. It takes a full day to explore this site and you can explore at night and in the daytime as well. Next up, we're headed to Cappadocia here in Turkey, another famous rock formation city that was built into caves. Nowadays, it is a historical heritage site as well, which also is commonly seen with hot air balloons flying around the area, providing you with a bird's eye view of just how amazing the landscape of this city really is. You can easily catch a flight from Istanbul's two major airports to Cappadocia. Kayseri is the main airport that you would pick. Next up, we're headed to Costa Rica right here in Central America, one of the most biodiverse countries on planet Earth. Many species of birds, mammals, and flora and fauna abundant everywhere you look. Do be sure to check out the wildlife in Manuel Antonio and the hot springs around La Fortuna and the beaches on the Caribbean and Pacific side. If you wanted to get to Costa Rica, there's two airports, one in San Jose and the other in the north in Liberia. You will need at least two to three weeks to explore this whole country. Next up, we're headed to Eastern Africa to Tanzania. This is home to Mount Kilimanjaro, also home to many incredible wildlife safaris that you can do along with trekking up to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. And there is Kilimanjaro in the background. Also, don't forget to head over to the coast to Zanzibar and check out this turquoise water. And when you arrive, you can say Jambo, which is hello in Swahili. And Hakuna Matata, which means no worries. Now we are headed to Southeast Asia to Cambodia. This here is Angkor Wat, located in Siam Reap. Located deep in the rainforest in the former Khmer Empire under the reign of King Surya Vaman. This was one of the largest religious sites in planet Earth when it was developed. Over 400 acres, the main temple complex is surrounded by a moat. Originally constructed as a Hindu temple for the god Vishnu around the 12th century. And now we're headed back to South America off the coast of Ecuador to the Galapagos Islands. One of the most amazing volcanic archipelagos on planet Earth. There is over 18 main islands with three smaller islands and it was made famous by Charles Darwin, who is said to have developed his theory of evolution right here in the Galapagos Islands. There are many unique species of plants and animals like the giant tortoise, marine iguana, the blue-footed boobies, penguins, and much more. Next up, we're headed back to Southeast Asia to the gem of Indonesia, Bali. Known for its many temples, volcanic mountains like Agung, rice terraces, beautiful beaches, friendly people, and incredibly rich culture with many different beaches. Some of the popular towns to stay are gonna be Kuda, Lijian, Seminyak, Uluwatu, and the airport that you'll arrive in is located in the capital of the island called Denpasar. While here, prepare to eat lots of seafood, mee goreng, and nasi goreng, which basically translates to fried rice. Next up, we're headed to the west coast of Italy to the Cinque Terre, which basically translates to the five towns. Those five towns are Vernassa, Cornelia, Manarola, Rio Maggiore, and Monterosa al Mare. While here, do indulge in some of the local seafood, along with the local cuisine, including pesto and wine. As you will see, there are many grapes growing on the sides of the hills. You can walk around the villages and see the amazing colorful houses and views that they offer here, as well as do some hiking and swimming. Now we're headed to the Indian Ocean. Right in the middle is the small island nation of the Maldives, which consists of over 1,000 coral islands 
and 26 atolls. The capital is Mali, which is considered one of the most densely populated capitals on Earth. While here you'll experience stunning beaches and crystal clear waters full of marine life. Best time to visit is dry season, December to March. Next up, we're headed over to Tahiti, which is in French Polynesia. More specifically, you want to check out Bora Bora. This volcanic island is surrounded by a coral reef, and it is absolutely stunning. Tahiti is home to many popular tourist destinations like Morea, with these floating beach bungalows over the water. Tahiti is divided into two parts, Tahiti Nui and Tahiti Idi. You will arrive here in Papeete at the airport of Fa'a'a. Here we are in Peru. Again, in South America, this nation is home to some of the most amazing sites on Earth. The Atacama Desert, the Andes Mountains and the Amazon, Lake Titicaca, the capital of Lima, and Machu Picchu. Be sure to also explore Cusco. Now we're headed to Southeast Asia to the Philippines, a place that is considered one of the premier travel destinations of the 21st century with over 7,000 islands and 109 million people living here. You originate in Manila and then you head out to one of those amazing tropical islands. Some of the favorites here are Palawan and El Nido, Boracay, Bohol, as well as Surigao del Sur. Now we are headed to the wonderful Taj Mahal located in Agra. This here mausoleum was built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in the year 1632 and completed in 1653 for his beloved wife. Mumtaz Mahal. The dome of the Taj Mahal is 73 meters high and the exterior is made of white marble. It glimmers in the sun and there is a reflection pool that overlooks a beautiful garden. Next up, we're headed to the highest mountain peak in the world, Mount Everest, located in the Himalaya Mountains. Now this borders between Nepal and Tibet, also northern India. The elevation of Mount Everest is 29,000 feet. The first summit of this mountain was completed on 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary of New Zealand and Tenzing Norgay, a Sherpa from Nepal. Heading back down to South America, we are coming to you from Rio de Janeiro here in the southeastern part of Brazil. Famous for its carnival celebrations, beautiful beaches like Copacabana, Ipanema, Le Blanc, just to name a few, as well as Christ the Redeemer statue, going to the top of Corcovado Mountain, and Sugarloaf Mountain. They do speak Portuguese here, so bom dia, which means good morning. Spending three to five days in Rio is definitely time well spent. Next up, we're headed back to Italy. This time we're on the Adriatic side over in Venice. Built on a group of small islands separated by canals, it is famous for gondola rides. Also because it was a historical trading and commerce area during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Nowadays you can visit the Piazza San Marco, St. Mark's Basilica, the Grand Canal area and really just take in all of the history. It does get crowded though. And they now require a reservation to visit. Now we're on our way to the Canadian Rockies to Banff. Now there is a town here and also several different lakes. It's surrounded by spectacular mountains, glaciers, lakes, forests. People come up here for skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, you name it. Very popular place. Also, there is the Banff Hot Springs and the popular lakes known as Peto Lake and Lake Louise. We're staying in Canada and we're going to the east. This time we're going to Niagara Falls, located along the Niagara River. It actually borders between the United States and Canada and consists of three separate waterfalls. Bridal Veil Falls, American Falls, and Horseshoe Falls. While you're here, you can actually take a helicopter ride, do a boat tour up to the waterfalls where it gets very misty, or just look from above upon the observation deck. The Canadian side is considered the most well-known. Heading out to the middle of the Pacific, this time we're headed to the island of Maui for the road to Hana. This windy road is 52 miles long and goes through the lush rainforest on the island where you'll see many different waterfalls and beautiful coastline views. Some of the towns you'll stop along the way are Paia, Haiku, and Hana at the very end where you will find a red sand beach, a black sand beach, and a white sand beach, Wailua Falls, and the Seven Sacred Pools. On our way down to Patagonia here in South America, it is located in Chile and Argentina. This majestic region is mountainous and lush. Here you will find glaciers, marble caves for kayaking around, lots of different wildlife, including llamas, pumas, flamingos, and other animals. You also have the area of Tierra del Fuego and the famous southern village known as Ushuaia. 
Now we're actually headed over towards Australia to the outback. This here is Uluru Rock, formerly known as Ayers Rock. This is really a unique place in the middle of Australia. There's no big cities anywhere to be seen for hundreds and thousands of miles in either direction. With a circumference of 5.8 miles, it is considered the world's largest rock monolith. Heading back to Europe, this time we're headed to the Swiss Alps, a popular ski resort destination with towns including Zermatt, which is considered the base camp for the Matterhorn Mountain. One of the best ways to see the Swiss Alps is by train. You can get the Golden Pass and you can check out the towns and villages in between where there's Interlock and Lauterbrunnen, Grindelwald, and so many special places. But again, most people like to go here for the skiing in the Swiss Alps. But the good news is you can visit the Swiss Alps during the winter, the spring, the fall, and the summer and enjoy it. On our way back down to Africa, this time we're in Egypt exploring the ancient Egypt where the Sphinx and the pyramids of Giza are along the Nile River. Here you can find the Great Pyramid and the tombs that are located near Cairo. If you head south toward Aswan, you end up in places like Luxor. Abu Simbel, Valley of the Kings. Also while here, you can actually take a Nile River cruise and explore all of the ancient sites from the luxury of a tour boat. I recommend at least seven days to explore all of ancient Egypt. Now we're actually headed way up north. This time we're headed to Iceland, a volcanic island with tons of water and streams and rivers running all throughout of here where you'll find many different waterfalls and actually active lava flow. Known as the land of fire and ice, you can also do geothermal pools like this one at the Blue Lagoon and other geysers are here. You will see a very beautiful green side of Iceland as well. The majestic horses and other wildlife along with herds of sheep as well as the midnight sun. And if you stick around long enough, you might find the Northern Lights. Now the Northern Lights are a thing that you'll want to see, but not exclusive to Iceland. You can find them in Norway, Alaska, and other parts of Scandinavia. So if you're looking for Aurora Borealis, you can check out the Northern Hemisphere for this. Most commonly seen during the winter months, but it's not always a guarantee that you will see them when seeking Aurora Borealis because she is elusive. That is why you should consider yourself lucky if you are ever so fortunate to actually see them in person. Headed back down under, this time we're at the Great Barrier Reef off of Queensland, Australia. It's over 900 islands, making it the largest coral reef system in the world, extending 1,430 miles. There's said to be around 1,500 species of fish and 411 different species of hard coral here. People like to go and explore this natural marine biodiversity without leaving any footprint. Now we're headed to the Great Wall of China. Construction began over 2,000 years ago to protect the Chinese people from the northern invaders like the Mongols. It extends 13,000 miles, built primarily of brick and tamped earth with stone. The most efficient way to get here is from Beijing and then take the bus or a train to Bada Ling. There are other sections though of the China Wall that you can visit, but the easiest one is probably going to be from Beijing. Headed all the way down south, this time we're headed to Antarctica, the southernmost continent and the fifth largest in the world. This is one place that if you go to, you are in a very small demographic of people who've actually visited. It is very rugged and rough, comprised of 90% of the world's ice and 70% of the world's fresh water. Teeming with wildlife such as penguins and a variety of different whales. The best way to get here is by boat from Argentina. Heading over to the island nation of New Zealand. It has a North Island and a South Island along with several smaller islands. It offers a wide variety of climate zones and landscapes with beaches in the north and then snow-capped mountains in the south. They also have the Fiordlands in the South Island. Very beautiful around Queenstown. If you go to Abel Tasman Park or Mount Cook, very awesome places to explore doing hiking. You can do skiing. People also do surfing. And there are many geothermal parks as well as lots of waterfalls. Headed back to Italy, this time we're exploring around Rome. Now ancient Rome has the Forum, the Colosseum, Circus Maximus. There's also the Vatican City, the Pantheon, 
There's also the Trevi Fountain. There's so much history in Rome. After all, this is the head of the Holy Roman Empire. Because of its history, it is a must-do bucket list destination. You should expect to be here for at least three days. Now we're headed to a hidden gem. This is known as the Dalmatian Coast right along Croatia. It extends for 400 miles. There is an ancient history dating back to the medieval times that you'll want to explore in places like Dubrovnik or Havar for those of you who like the Game of Thrones. But there's also this beautiful water and bays and islands that you can explore all across this region of Croatia. By the way guys, I want to remind you that if you check the links below, we do have specific travel guides for some of these destinations, so don't forget to check the description below. Now we're headed to Colombia, to Guatape, Pinol. Now this large rock is very interesting because you can actually walk up the sides of the cliff and then get a view of the lake and the surrounding area around Guatape. It's a very Edenic type environment. The best way to get to Guatape is a tour bus that goes from Medellin all the way over here. It does take around an hour and a half to get here, but like I said, it is worth it. Now we're headed to White Sands, New Mexico. Here you will see this silica type white sand that you can walk across or even sandboard glide along this beautiful soft sand right out here in the middle of the desert. Now we're actually headed back out to Hawaii to Hawaii Volcano National Park. This is home to the active volcano known as Kilauea. There's two volcanoes in the region. There's Mauna Loa, which is considered the largest active volcano, and then Kilauea considered the most active volcano in the world. And it's not always running with lava, but when it is, it is raging. So if you get a chance to check out this lava flow, do so. There are many hikes that you can do while on this area of the Big Island, so do some research before exploring. Next up, we're headed to another volcano caldera. This one's called Santorini, the honeymooner's paradise right here in the Cyclades Islands of Greece. Some of the places to explore are going to be Ea, Fera, and Akrotiri. Four days in Santorini seems to be perfect. Next up, we're headed to Paris, the romantic city, home of the Eiffel Tower. If you can, take the elevator to the top of the tower, as well as several cathedrals like Notre Dame and Sacre Coeur, as well as the Palace of Versailles. As you go around Paris, you realize this is a very eclectic and artistic city with other places such as Moulin Rouge, home to the Can Can Dance, as well as Mason Rose Cafe, and even the largest shopping mall in the world, Galleries of Lafayette. I recommend at least four days in Paris. Next up, we're headed to the Dead Sea. Now the Dead Sea borders with Jordan and Israel. And while here, you can do a mud bath or a salt bath, which is interesting because when you get in the water, you actually float because of all the salt and the buoyancy in the water. There are no fish or animals that live in the lake or around the lake. It is basically a salt pond. You can see here's the mud bath and once you get the mud then you go in the water and wash it off. It's also the lowest point on planet Earth. And now we're headed back out to Hawaii to Kauai actually Nepali coast. Right here is on the western edge of Hawaii where you'll find a lush rainforest and dramatic sea cliffs as well as Waimea Canyon, Hanalei Bay and some of the most dramatic scenery you will find in terms of landscape anywhere in the world. If you get a chance, do a helicopter ride or a boat tour to the sea caves of Nepali coast. Next up, we're headed to Yellowstone. Now this is considered a very seismic activity zone, but there's also a lot of wildlife you will see here, including buffalo, grizzly bears, moose, wolves, and of course, more bison. But you can also find Majestic Waterfalls, Old Faithful Geyser, the Prismic Geyser as well, which is a geothermal pool, and so much more here in Yellowstone National Park. If you get a chance, it's a must-see for sure. Now we're actually headed down to South America to the Amazon, the Amazon River and the Amazon Rainforest, two areas that you can explore inside of one area known as the Amazon. The Amazon is the largest tropical rainforest in the world with 2.7 million square miles. 
Also, the Amazon River is the second largest river in the world, and it is known for its incredible biodiversity. And yes, we are headed back to Italy. This time we're on the Amalfi Coast, home to Positano, as well as the island of Capri. It is a tourist destination known for its stunning beaches, beautiful towns, as well as amazing beaches. The architecture of the towns actually dates back to the 9th century, so it's a very old area to explore right along the Mediterranean Sea here. If you get a chance, try and do the drive either on a moped or a very small car because the roads are windy and skinny. Now we're headed to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico known as the Riviera Maya. This area is in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo. In order to arrive here, you would most likely arrive in Cancun or Cozumel by airplane. And then you will explore Playa del Carmen and my favorite place, Tulum, as well as several of the Mayan ruins like Chichen Itza and the archaeological site of Tulum right there on the beach. I recommend seven days in Riviera Maya. Now we're headed to Arizona. This time we're in the Grand Canyon, the largest canyon in the world, carved out by the Colorado River. At the bottom of the Grand Canyon, you will find a majestic area known as Havasupai Falls, and it is along Havasu Creek. You can hike to the bottom and up in one day, they say, or some people actually do rim to rim. That's south rim to north rim. This time we're headed to Maya Bay, located in the PP Islands in the Andaman Sea of Thailand. Now this area here is considered by many to be the most beautiful beach in the world and it is currently undergoing repair, so you can't really swim here as much as we would like to. You can either arrive here by tour boat from Krabi or Phuket, or you can actually stay in the PP Islands at Tonsai Beach, so you can actually get here much quicker. Next up, we're headed to Guatemala, to a lake surrounded by volcanoes known as Lake Atitlan. This freshwater lake is surrounded by three dormant volcanoes and many different Mayan villages. The region truly is a paradise and popular with people who like to do retreats for yoga or just kicking back and relaxing. You will find a strong presence of Mayan culture that you should explore and appreciate while here. It also has lush green vegetation on the hillsides. You can do some hiking and kayaking while here, although the waves in the later part of the afternoon get very rough. And now for those of you who enjoy deep sea diving or just getting in the water and seeing incredible underwater places, Red Sea right here that intersects with Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, and Israel. So you can do some incredible diving here. As you can see, it is an underwater Disneyland. My favorite place on the Red Sea is Sharm El Sheikh, but you can also stay at Hergada. Both are in Egypt, but you could easily spend a week or two here exploring all the dive sites. And another place that you must go is the whole country of Thailand. Thailand is so diverse. In the north, you have Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai with the Golden Triangle and many Buddhist temples. If you go towards the middle, you have one of the most popular cities in the world with tourists, Bangkok. Then as you go south, you have Phuket, you have the Fifi Islands, you also have Krabi, and there's so much to see along the Malaysian Peninsula as well. Along with the many temples, there's also floating markets and great nightlife, but I really enjoy the culture and the people. Now we're headed to one of the premier cities in the world. This one is Dubai, and the reason we put this on the list is because it's a very futuristic, city they have the museum of the future home to the world's tallest building burj khalifa they also have some impressive projects where they're building islands largest ferris wheel in the world lots going on in dubai and i would say it is worth at least checking out although you could easily stay several weeks in dubai i'm going to recommend 72 to 96 hours if it's your very first time just to get a feel for the city Try to avoid the summer months, June, July, and August because it's extremely hot. Now we're headed to the Big Apple out here in New York and definitely one of the premier cities in all of the world, just like Dubai. If you've not been to the Big Apple, I would highly recommend getting over there at least once, checking out Manhattan, Times Square, all of those areas that you know so well. And yes, New York City is a true gem. 
For NYC, I would recommend around three to four days just exploring if it's your very first time. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this list of 50 best travel destinations around the world. We could do a part two with another 50 if you would like, including places like Raja Ampat, the islands of Palau. We could also include Vietnam and so much more, Cape Town, South Africa. If you guys want a part two, let us know in the comments and watch some more of our other videos, including 25 best cities in Europe, as well as our most recent video right here. And a big thanks to all the subscribers to Island Hopper TV.